Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining the OncLive Peer Exchange video editorial series. This video series features expert panel discussions on treatment challenges and practice management issues faced by oncologists and urologists who care for patients with cancer. I am Raul Concepcion. I'm a practicing urologist specializing in urological oncology, and I'm also the director of clinical research at Urology Associates in Nashville, Tennessee. I also happen to be the immediate past president of the Large Urology Group Practice Association. Today's panel discussion is a continuation of our series of discussions on managing cancer patients effectively in both oncology and urology practice settings. These videos can all be found on OncLive.com. I have the privilege of moderating today's discussion. We'll discuss the many new treatments for castration-resistant prostate cancer. Our goal is to provide urologists and oncologists with a range of expert perspectives on current challenges that affect your patients and your practice. For today's panel, I am joined by leading experts and frontline practitioners with a wide range of experience in these areas. It is my pleasure to welcome Dr. Lenny Gamella, the Bernard W. Godwin Professor of Prostate Cancer and Chairman of Department of Urology, Associate Director, Jefferson Kimmel Cancer Institute, and Clinical Director, Jefferson Kimmel Cancer Center Network, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Dr. Larry Karsh is the Director of Clinical Research and co-founder of the Urology Center of Colorado in Denver, Colorado. Dr. Mark Schultz is Medical Director of Prostate Oncology Specialists Incorporated, Marina Del Rey, California, and Executive Director of the Prostate Cancer Research Institute, Los Angeles, California. And Dr. Evan Yu is the Associate Professor, Department of Medicine, Division of Oncology at the University of Washington and Seattle Cancer Care Alliance. I'd like to begin by asking each of our panelists to discuss challenges in the management of castration-resistant prostate cancer, also known as CRPC, as we move into healthcare reform. In particular, I'd like to discuss the impact of payment reforms on treatment and the different challenges that affect academic versus non-academic practices. So, Lenny, let's start with you. Uh, what challenges are you currently facing in your academic practice in regards to advanced prostate cancer? And also tell us a little bit how you are preparing the future residents of urology to address these issues. Well, thanks, Raul. Um, I think the challenge that we have as urologists is that the uh, changes are coming at us very quickly concerning the management of advanced prostate cancer. The uh, fact that we have four and possibly soon to be five new agents approved specifically for uh, castrate-resistant prostate cancer is really creating challenges in, in teaching our urology residents how to approach these patients. Uh, we're very lucky that we have a very interactive program where we work very closely with medical oncologists and actually our urology residents are able to work with medical oncologists uh, basically on a weekly uh, weekly clinic where we see these patients jointly. So we're trying to be very proactive in it, but to be fair, the, the more senior urologists are really a little bit overwhelmed right now with all these new agents and really understanding where they fit in with the specific treatment algorithms for patients with this very, very challenging to manage clinical situation. Evan, you're in an academic institution up in Seattle, so how, how, is, it, uh, how is working up there in Seattle? What do you guys do differently? You know, it's fantastic. Um, I think first off, I just feel very fortunate to be uh, practicing in prostate cancer at this period of time where we have so many new agents uh, that are impacting the care and helping our patients live longer and live better. Uh, I do think that that always proposes new challenges, um, rising costs of health care, uh, insurance restrictions as, to, as far as uh, prescribing medications. And I think in the Northwest, um, they're fairly conscious about guidelines and who we can use what drugs with. Even when we are prescribing the drugs exactly as their FDA approval and indication is, we still oftentimes run into problems. Uh, insurance companies don't always want to approve the drugs, especially the oral prescription medications that can be a little bit more expensive. Um, and also, the, even with Medicare, 
you know, there's still the donut hole and the patients cannot all access the medications that we want to give them. Even that donut hole can be, can be cost prohibitive for some patients. Mark, is that kind of your experience? You've got a big um, medical oncology practice here in Southern California. Tell us a little bit about what's happening down here in Southern California. Yeah, well, when these pills first came out, and we're talking like uh, Zytiga and Extandi, the um, surprising thing in my, on my side was how often they were paid. Uh, they're very, very expensive, shockingly expensive. But the, uh, uh, in the process, uh, we discovered there are specialty pharmacies that can uh, basically track down, fight with the insurance companies, and sometimes even help with co-pays. So despite the fact that it's been a, a big shift handling all these new medicines and figuring out where they go, uh, and there certainly are people that have access problems, uh, more often than not, we're finding that the patients are getting the products. Larry, you're in a big community practice, what, 18, 20 now? At, the, at Tuck? We have 15 urologists, uh, radiation oncologists, and now have incorporated a medical oncologist into our practice. And, you know, I think, Raul, I can't even remember in my lifetime having this many drugs to treat uh, castration-resistant prostate cancer. I mean, there have been more drugs developed in the past three years than in the past three decades. And so we're in this new renaissance era of... Uh, uh, the, the treatments for uh, therapies for prostate, advanced prostate cancer. And, you know, I think some of the challenges that we find are that, you know, we don't have data at this point to tell us how to sequence this. And until we get that data, uh, we're basically going to be treating these patients uh, on practical considerations every day, like um, patient preference, uh, comorbidities. Uh, and uh, also even financial uh, 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 considerations for how we're going to treat these patients. And until we get evidence-based uh, guidelines and even biomarkers, um, a lot of these patients are going to see not only one of these drugs, but maybe all of them. And so we have to figure out how to sequence, and it, you know, it gets into situations where we have very tightly controlled uh, managed care and they are really looking at this with a microscope. Even when we try to get uh, diagnostic tests like a, like a sodium fluoride PET, we're really running up against a, uh, a brick wall in some cases, just trying to get these tests uh, done. So we're finding these challenges. We just have to figure it out as we go along. No, I think that's right. I think all of us are going to be forced to, as the quote accountable care organizations come more into play, whether or not I think they'll actually uh, work to, to how the government has designed them uh, it remains to be seen. But I, and it, it seems to me that no matter where you're practicing and no matter what your setup is, it's something that we're all going to probably have to deal with. So uh, 